Hi. Okay, let's look at uh, look at the velocity of sound apparatus today. And firstly, we'll have a look at what you get in the box. And we'll set it up with a SIG gel and a scope, and we'll go through how it works as well. So you'll receive a full unit, which consists of a transmitter with some inputs and outputs for you to monitor the signal, a sensitive microphone, which can be moved up and down, and a reflecting screen, all mounted on a scaled baseboard for taking measurements. And the basic principle of this is we'll generate a sound using the transmitter and we will then receive that sound using the microphone at various distances away from the transmitter. And from that we can deduce the velocity of sound in air. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, firstly we won't need this base pack, so we'll just remove that for now. And we'll connect our microphone to the transmitter. Okay. Now, for this to work, you're going to require a signal generator, this is one of ours, and a dual beam oscilloscope. And we're going to use the signal generator to apply a signal to the transmitter, which will generate the sound. So let's do that. Now I've got this set at around about 6 kilohertz. Um, anywhere between sort of 5 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz is going to give decent results. But we'll start at 6. And if we turn the amplitude up, there's our 6 kilohertz sound wave. We're going to monitor that on our oscilloscope and we'll use channel 1 here to monitor the input signal. It should be nice and clean. Set to channel 1 and there it is. A nice clean 6 kilohertz sound wave. We're going to pick that up using our microphone and I'm going to use channel 2 to monitor the microphone. Again, the sockets are on the back of the transmitter here, so nice and easy to get to. Let's tighten that down. We'll move to channel two. And if we turn this up, there is a received signal from our microphone. If we monitor both of those together, we can see here is channel one. That's our transmitted signal. Here's channel 2, that's our received signal. I'll just turn the amplitude down here so I can talk. What we're going to do here is we are going to measure the distance between two consecutive compressions. That's going to give us our wavelength of sound. Um, we know the frequency that's applied from our signal generator, or we can measure it from the scope. And if we've got a frequency and we've got a wavelength, we can then calculate the velocity of sound. So. There's channel 1, moving now. If I line these two up, our microphone now is picking up a peak at the same time as the transmitter is sending one. If I move it further away, you can see the trace for the microphone moves in time. And the distance between them lining up the first time and the second time must be one full wavelength. And you can read that dimension off the scale here. So when they line up here, that's at around about 13 centimetres. And the next time they line up is around about 19. So that gives us a 6 centimetre wavelength. You could measure the distance for two full wavelengths and divide by two. That's going to reduce your error in measuring L. But for single results, just one wavelength will be fine. Once we've done that, we've got a frequency here, we've got a wavelength, we can use the equation V equals F lambda, and we can calculate the speed of sound in air. Obviously, for more in-depth um, experiments, there's no reason why you can't change the frequency. That will lead to a different wavelength. You can then plot wavelength against frequency on a graph. You can put a best line fit in, and you can calculate the speed of sound in that way. This is uh, a very nice way of demonstrating and calculating the speed of sound and it does give students a chance to use an oscilloscope and a signal generator at the same time. That's one way in which this piece of apparatus can be used. We can also use it for demonstrating standing waves or stationary waves. So rather than having the wave propagating here from the transmitter 
and our files across the room, we can cause it to be reflected from this screen and transmitted back. And just like waves on a string or um, any other kind of stationary wave, we will get a reflection and areas of constructive interference and areas of destructive interference. And now if we just simply monitor the output from the microphone, it doesn't matter too much now about the output from the signal generator itself. So we just want channel 1 here. This. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this microphone round so it is aiming at the screen. This is purely because there is going to be some drop in intensity as the sound travels from the transmitter is reflected from the screen and this just gives uh, slightly better results on the scope. And what we're going to see here is as this sound wave is reflected from this screen, when you have two compressions meeting each other at the same time, you're going to end up with a very large amplitude. When we have two rarefactions meeting each other at the same time, you're going to end up with a very large negative amplitude here. On the same lines as that, there are going to be periods where you're going to have a rarefaction tra traveling in this direction, meeting a compression traveling in this direction, and in theory, that should cancel out and leave no signal at all. And let's have a look. If we move all the way to this end, you can see on the scope there, the signal has reduced quite dramatically. It will increase to a large amplitude again and reduce again as we're traveling through these constructive interference and destructive interference patches. For the same reason that we've turned the microphone around, we're always going to get some signal, even when theoretically we'd expect nothing. That's purely because the sound intensity traveling in this direction is going to be greater than in that direction because there are some losses as it travels. Now, in this case, we're going to find the distance between two maxima. So there's one maxima there, and that's at 8 centimetres. And the next maxima there at 11 centimetres are going to be separated by a half a wavelength, just like in a stationary wave apparatus using waves in a strip. So between one to three maxima, we're going to find our one wavelength. And again, you can use the equation V equals F lambda, and you can calculate the speed of sound in this setup as well. So not only is this a really convenient way for students to calculate the speed of sound inside the science lab, it gives them experience of stationary waves, it gives them experience of using a dual beam oscilloscope and a signal generator the velocity of sound apparatus from the cell. Thank you.